There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. We're going to cover a molecule called ozone, much more in this video, and then again more in the next couple of years as well. Ozone is quite interesting because ozone is different to, for example, oxygen, which has two oxygen molecules attached by two covalent bonds. So it's called a double bond. In this case, ozone is actually quite different. And we're not going to cover the structure of ozone in this video. We're going to do that in the next couple of videos. But what we have to do in this video is we have to talk about ozone in the, your different layers, in your lower layer, so in the troposphere, and also in your upper layer, in your stratosphere. So one thing you should know is that about 10% of our ozone is found in the lower layer, about 10%. The remaining 90% are found in our stratosphere. And what you should also know is that the troposphere, so in the lower layer, the ozone is considered to be a pollutant, which means it causes problems. And in the in stratosphere, it is very beneficial because ozone here, the ozone layer helps us to protect us from UV radiation. Right? So that's what we have to talk about in this video. But what you, what you should also remember is that ozone, we, I talked about the amount of ozone in the atmosphere. I can't remember the exact values, but I think it was 0 0.00002%. 0 0.00002% of all the gases are ozone. Right? That was for generally, so overall. But the difference, I mean, 10% of that is in the troposphere and 90% of that is in the stratosphere. So even in the ozone layer, which is in the stratosphere, so this part here is the ozone layer, even here, there's not going to be much ozone, right? So it's not like there's like a lot, a lot of molecules of ozone. It's still tiny compared to the other ones. But overall, there's just more in the stratosphere compared to the troposphere. The reason why I mention all this is because the dot point itself says, describe ozone as a molecule able to act both as an upper atmosphere UV radiation shield and a lower atmosphere pollutant. So we have to cover both those areas, how it helps us in the upper atmosphere, but causes problems in the lower atmosphere. So it acts in the lower atmosphere, which is the, in this case, the troposphere. It acts as a pollutant. And the reason why is we covered in the last video, when, for example, when it combines with nitrogen dioxide, which comes from cars, right, so car emissions. If nitrogen dioxide reacts with UV radiation, what can happen is it can form nitrogen monoxide and it can form an oxygen-free radical. We're going to cover oxygen-free radical more in a couple of years' time. But this is basically just a splitting off. So this, they were bonded beforehand, right? one nitrogen with two oxygens. And then this UV radiation, this energy, made it break apart. And now it's formed these two different types of molecules. And this free radical in the first reaction can then combine with an oxygen in the second here. So oxygen molecule, O2, plus the free radical can form an O3 molecule. And in this case, that's ozone. And that's how ozone is formed in the lower atmosphere, in the troposphere. Right? Now the problem is in lower atmosphere, it's poisonous for us. So for humans, it's poisonous. Remember, the troposphere is where all the humans live and animals, so it's not good for us. And it's also in the troposphere, it can act as a greenhouse gas, which means it can sort of increase the rate of warming. So it, increase, it can increase warming, which warming itself is not bad, but too much warming can cause problems for vegetation, so for plants and for animals. So, so overall, that would not be good. That's why it can act as a pollutant in the lower atmosphere. So I just talked about how it's created and what it does, and that's how it acts in the lower atmosphere. But what it does in the upper atmosphere is quite different. So now I'm talking about the stratosphere. Remember, the stratosphere starts at roughly about 12 to 15 kilometers up. Right? So zero will be here. I should use a different color, maybe red. Zero will be here, roughly sea level. This here, this point here, will be about 15 kilometers. This point here, which is the start of the ozone layer, will be about 20-ish sort of kilometers. Right? So quite high up is the ozone layer which is this part here, it's within the stratosphere. Now what does the ozone layer do? Well, we have UV radiation, and if you remember what UV radiation is, UV radiation can cause cancer in animals and humans, and also cause 
other problems for other living things. So UV radiation, especially there's three different types of UV radiation. There is UVC, so UVC. This here is the most deadly version. This has this, this is really deadly. If this gets to us, we will be in massive problems. And also UVB and UVA. So three different types of UV radiation. Now, all of the UVC, obviously the really deadly one, is going to be absorbed by a combination of ozone and normal oxygen molecules in the stratosphere. So you can see UVC coming from the sun is completely absorbed. It won't reach Earth itself, which is really good because UVC is really deadly. UVB, which is the stuff that for us is problematic as well, that can still cause skin cancer to a high degree, that will be 95% absorbed. So 95% of the problematic UVB is absorbed by the ozone, by basically only the ozone. So this is what the ozone does. It helps us absorb UVB and UVC and also a tiny bit of UVA. But UVA itself even has beneficial effects. For example, we need to have UVA on our skin to make sure we don't get rickets. So it helps vitamins, vitamin D creation, right? So UVA isn't the biggest problem, but UVB and UVC are, and they are destroyed, more or less, by ozone. And this is how it happens. So we have ozone formation and then the deformation of ozone. Both these combine to help us make sure that UV doesn't reach, actually reach Earth itself, or these deadly versions don't reach the Earth. So first, we talk about the formation. So here, within the, so you can imagine here, in the stratosphere, we're just going to have these O2 molecules kind of just, just around, floating around. And if one of these lightning, not lightning, uh, UV rays hit it, what happens is we have one oxygen molecule, it's hit by a UV ray, and then this oxygen molecule absorbs the UV ray, which means UV ray has been absorbed, it's gone, and then that makes a break from an oxygen molecule into two free radical oxygen molecules. Right? That's the first step. Second step is an oxygen molecule, a different oxygen molecule, right? So we have these new ones being created, and they can bump into other oxygen molecules which are around them. And when that happens, we have a oxygen molecule and then a free radical formed by the UV and rays, those combine to form ozone. But the reason why I drew it in a big, big ozone, as a big font, is because this is really excited. This is so excited that unless it gets away its energy, it has too much energy, unless it gets away its energy, it will break down back into oxygen and free radicals. But we don't want that to happen, we want to make sure it stays that way. So what happens last step is the really excited ozone bumps into a nitrogen molecule. Remember, nitrogen is 80% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. It's going to be quite a bit of nitrogen in that area. And when they bump each other, basically the excitement is transferred from the ozone to the nitrogen. So now the nitrogen is excited and the ozone is fine. And now we have stable ozone. So not only do we, not only do we have stable ozone, but we also managed to get rid of some of the UV radiation because through that formation, we managed to absorb some UV radiation. Right? So that's how ozone is formed. And then how is ozone deformed? Well, if we have this ozone molecule and it's hit by another ray of UV, that means the ozone will break down again into oxygen, O2, and the oxygen radical. So basically it's the reverse of step two. And then what can happen is that same radical that was formed in number one can combine with other oxygens, uh, sorry, ozones, and form even more oxygen. So this is how it's broken down again. So what you can imagine is there's always a breaking up, as a building up and breaking down of ozone happening in that ozone layer. But the reason why is because if that happens, both in the formation phase and the breaking down phase, in each of those cases, it's going to absorb UV radiation to make that happen. So that UV radiation is going to be absorbed in these chemical reactions, which is good for us because that means UVB and UVC don't reach our troposphere, that means we are guarded from it. Now what you should also know is that um, this deformation doesn't only happen by ozone being hit by UV, but it can also be caused by hydroxide radicals, chlorine radicals, or nitrogen oxide radicals. That's just an aside kind of thing. But one, the main thing I want, to get, want you to get out of this video is you should know that the ozone pollutant 
Uh, the ozone in the lower layers, the troposphere, is actually pollutant because it can, can cause poison. It can be poisonous for us humans and be a greenhouse gas. You should roughly know how it's created as well through that nitrogen dioxide being come in contact with UV radiation, thereby through two steps forming ozone. But what I also wanted you to know is that the ozone, the same ozone in the higher areas, in that ozone layer, which is in the, in the sort of mid part of the stratosphere, there it's actually a very good, it acts as a shield against UVB and UVC radiation. And it does this through first forming from these oxygen molecules being hit by UV radiation, thereby forming oxygen radicals. These oxygen radicals will then bump into other oxygen molecules, forming ozone. And this ozone is not only formed, but also UV radiation is absorbed in the process in the first step. And then if these ozone molecules are hit by more UV radiation, they will break down again. But in the process, it will also absorb more UV radiation, which means there's less UV radiation. And eventually, oxygen is formed again. So it's always a building up and a breaking down of ozone. But in the process, we have ozone being, uh, sort of UV radiation being absorbed, which is good for our living and our survival. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.